What is the Global AI Index? Hi, my name is Serena. And I'm Joe. And we're here to walk you through the latest version of the Global AI Index from Tortoise. In short, this is a ranking of countries based on their level of artificial intelligence capacity. But it's more than a ranking. At Tortoise, we like to try and make sense of things. And the index is our attempt at making sense of the current state of AI. So, Joe, how does it work exactly? Essentially, we collect a lot of data that can be used to measure national AI capabilities in different ways. For example, we look at the number of AI scientists working in a country, mm. or how many models uh, a country is producing. We pull together 122 of these metrics or indicators from 24 different sources, and we organize them across seven pillars of analysis. So talent, operating environment, infrastructure, research, development, government strategy, and commercial ecosystem. Every indicator is weighted differently, depending on how relevant it is to AI, how much it contributes to AI capacity, and how comprehensive the data source is. For really in-depth explanation of the specific weighting methodology, I suggest you have a look at the methodology report linked at the bottom of the Global AI Index page on our website. Yes, and in there you'll also find an explanation and full details about the changes that we made to the methodology compared to last year's index. Every year we spend a lot of time speaking to experts and making sure that the index reflects the current state of the AI landscape today and the direction that AI is taking. In terms of key changes, this year we have expanded the list of countries from 62 to 83. And we've generally updated the index to reflect increased government activity in AI and the fact that large-scale capital investment in generative AI and access to computing power have become increasingly central to AI capacity. Mm -hmm. Yes, and if we look at the ranking, which is what everyone is really interested in, we have the US and China still number one and number two, unsurprisingly. China is really the only country that comes close to challenging US governments on AI. There's still a pretty big gap between them. In some areas like private investment, that gap has actually widened from last year. Mm -hmm. Yes, but they're both way ahead of everyone else. Singapore is still third, which is impressive considering it's a much smaller country and economy compared to the big AI players. Yeah, excluding China, it's really become the primary AI hub in East and Southeast Asia. It pulls in more AI investment than much larger Asian economies like South Korea and Japan. That's right, and Singapore is also a very good performer when it comes to relative indicators and relative measurements. So those indicators that measure AI capacity in relation to a country's population and economy size. But what about the UK? So the UK last year dropped to fourth place. This year it's just about managed to hold on to that, but France is now very close behind in fifth. Yes, and France really is the big story of this year, right? Thinking about how it's become the third global player in open source generative AI model development after the US and China, while the UK stays behind. Yeah, the big French success story is uh, AI startup Mistral AI. You might not have heard of them. Uh, they're just over a year old, they've raised a billion euros, and have started releasing cutting edge open source language models that genuinely rival the best that the US and China have to offer. Yeah, and I was looking at our data and even in terms of AI government spending, France seems to have dedicated 60% more than the UK over the past five years. In short, what are the other key findings? Give me your top three. So one is uh, India. They're in the top 10 for the first time. They do very well in talent. That's partially down to demographic weight, partially a strong educational system and partially uh, IT offshoring to India. That wealth of AI talent hasn't necessarily translated to commercial AI growth or better AI infrastructure yet, but we expect it will in the future. Mm -hmm. Private investment in generative AI is growing. A lot of it is really driven by a handful of US tech giants, the so-called Magnificent Seven, and they've been making multi-billion dollar investments into startups like OpenAI and Anthropic. But there's still not really a clear business model for companies purely training AI large-scale AI models, um, despite all the excitement. This is all based on the potential future gains of artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. This is really the year that governments who have been talking a lot about the importance of AI have actually started putting their money where their mouth is. Government commitments to AI spending, for example on research and development or building out powerful computing infrastructure. Tortoise analysis suggests that 64 billion has been committed by national governments in the last year alone. Yes, and there's really much more to be said about South Korea, for example, who was able to hold on to sixth place and is particularly strong when it comes to applying AI in some key industrial sectors. Canada has dropped a few places but is still ranking quite high on government strategy for example. Head on over to the Global AI Index page on tortoisemedia.com to find out more and explore the data.